Welcome to the octopus. I get up from my feather bed in the morning, and when I'm washing, such desires come over me, and they are wicked desires, that even Mr. Beckett and Mr. Smiles seem handsome to me. If it goes on much longer when I lie in my innocent, pink, distempered room, with the sheets drawn right up under my chin, and imagine such scenes, I dare not even imagine my dreams. And I fear that my fleshly desires will drag me down to the gutter where, as I have been told, so many wretches end. What can I do to keep up that appearance of pure affection which he will expect from me? How many desires he may have had, desires which will quell any base desires he may have had, desires which he never, never knew.
for those who knew the circumstances in which she was compelled to live. Whoever is familiar with this existence, the existence of the needy, hard working, must admit that to anyone who is driven to such a life, there will come a time when he or she will say, Enough! Enough. <laughs> Surrounded with debts, faced with the complete hopelessness of the situation, this existence, like that of many others, offered her no particular inducement to stay. You only have to look at the dwelling place of this woman. I purposely avoid using the word house. You yourself would not dare to call the place a house. Think of living all your life in such surroundings, and don't imagine that she ever had a holiday. And even in that hall, she was pursued. pursued. 